I will show you how to spot two simple Sudoku strategies that most other solvers overlook. And with that, it's solving time. First, get some easy solves out of the way. You might notice with these two sevens and this seven, there's only one place to put a seven in block seven. And then follow these two threes to go with this three. And you can solve this three in block nine in the corner. Bum, bum, bum. Greetings, friend. I want to thank Yoshi Baroshi for recommending this puzzle from Nikoli, which is the Japanese company that owns the Sunoku trademark in Japan. This puzzle will seem very hard when in fact it just contains not one, but two easily overlooked strategies that you have to find if you want to solve it. And so you want to start now by looking for digit restrictions from one to nine. And in particular, focus on anything that eliminates candidates here in block five. Block five is the key. So if you look at the ones, you'll notice with this one and this one, there's only two places to put a one in block two. So if you have two possibilities for a candidate in a three by three block market, you have one possibility, solve it. But these ones are in the same column, which means that a one cannot be anywhere else in that column outside the block. Otherwise, no place to put a one up here in block two. So match up with these ones and you can put ones here in block five. And then with this one and this one, only two places for a one in block seven. That's all you can do with the ones. You'll notice there's no given twos, so no marking you can do just yet with the twos. Move on to the threes. With these two threes, two places for a three in block three. And then with this three, come up the column, this three across the row. You have a pointing pair of threes here in block four. Restrict the threes here in block five to these two cells. That's it for the threes. Move on to the fours. These two fours, two places to put a four in block two. And then with this four and the four coming down, you'll notice another pointing pair of fours that point into block five here in row five. And it restricts the fours of these four cells here in block five. You'll notice how block five is the key. Also see with these fours, two places to put a four in block seven. Okay, move on to the fives. With these two fives, two places for a five in block six. That's it for the fives. Only one given six. Nothing you can mark the sixes at this time. Move on to the sevens. And you will notice that with this seven and this seven, you get another pointing pair of sevens pointing into block five. Match up with these sevens, it restricts the sevens right here. If you're not familiar with the terms uh, pointing pair, I cover that in the other top most popular Sudoku strategies in my free solving guide. You can get it by clicking on the pinned comment below. Move on to the eights. All right, with the eights in row four and column three, two places for an eight in block four. And then in block eight with this eight and this eight coming down, you have another pointing pair of eights pointing into block five. To go with this eight, restricts the eights right there in block five. Okay, how about the nines? These two nines, you can put nines right there in block three. And then this nine and this nine gives you a pointing pair of nines that point into block five. Restricts the nines of these three cells. I don't normally mark candidates if they're in three possibilities in a block. And so the second part of my five-step Sudoku solving method would be to go back through if you made some solves and make sure you capture all the easy solves and marking. However, we didn't make any more additional solves other than that seven and three before you started the marking. So you can move on to step three, which would be looking for pairs and triples. The problem here is to look for pairs and triples, you'd want to focus on heavy houses. So Sudoku rows, columns, and blocks that have at least five cells filled out. But you might notice there are not any at this point. There are none. And so this is probably the part where you got stuck. 
And it's time for that first simple strategy that most solvers overlook. What you have to notice is all these pointing pairs create additional restriction in these columns and these rows that feed into block five. And so what I call those is when you have a pointing pair to go along with digits in a row column block, call that a almost heavy house because it adds additional restriction. You have to notice that, see what's going on here in block five. The other thing you might see in block five is that there are no markings here in these three cells. But you have markings for eights, threes, ones, sevens. So those cannot be in these three cells. What can be here? You have to look and see what can be in those cells. Okay, this cell, what can it be? It cannot be a one because it's pointing pair of ones. It can be a two. It cannot be a three. It cannot be a four because it's four. It cannot be a five. It can be a six. It cannot be a seven because of the sevens are restricted here. It cannot be an eight because of this eight. It cannot be a nine because of the nines there. What about this cell? It cannot be a one. It could be a two. It cannot be a three or a four because of the pointing pair of fours. It can be a five. It can be a six, but cannot be a seven because of this seven, an eight here, or a nine because of these nines. How about this cell? It cannot be a one. Could be a two, cannot be a three because of the pointing pair of threes, cannot be a four because of the pointing pair of fours, can be a five, but it cannot be a six, cannot be a seven, cannot be an eight because of the pointing pair of eights, it cannot be a nine. You'll notice the two, five, and six are the only three possibilities for these three cells in block five. And this is the, mo the first overlooked strategy that most solvers will miss. This is called a naked triple. And this is beautiful because the two, five, and six have to be in these three cells. Nothing else can go there. Two, five, and six cannot be in any of these other cells in the block. And it creates additional restriction. But you might notice now, since the sixes have to be in one of these two cells, this is now a pointing pair of sixes. We take this six, this pointing pair of sixes, where can a six go in block eight? It can only go right here. You're going to look at the impact of row, column, and block. And this will set up your second easily overlooked strategy. You'll also notice that the fives have to be one of these two cells. So they become a pointing pair as well. So now you have this five, a pointing pair of fives. You can displace this five right here and solve the cell now for a five. It'll start setting up that next easily overlooked strategy. This is beautiful stuff, the way this puzzle is set up. I'm so thankful Yoshi sent this to me. Okay, so after doing that, you're going to start looking for some more restrictions here. And what you'll notice now with the fives is you want to focus here on column four. This is what's easily overlooked. Where can the fives go in this three block tower or stack, you call it? So the three different blocks, blocks two, five, and eight. Well, five can only be in columns five and six here now in block eight. It can only be in these two cells here in columns five and six in block five. What that means is five cannot be in any of these cells here in column four. They has to be in one of these three cells in column four, which restricts them to block two. Well, since you have a five right there, fives must be in one of these spots. And so this is called a claiming pair. And I cover this also in my free Sudoku solving guide. And most people might find this claiming pair, right? Basically, a five's got to be in one of these spots. Otherwise, you have no place to put a five in column four. So you can eliminate fives from these cells. But what's easily overlooked is where can the twos go in column four? It can only be in somewhere here in columns five and six in block eight. The twos have to be part of this naked triple in block five, which restricts them to columns five and six, which means now the twos have to be in one of these three spots, column four, or else there's no place to put a two in column four. This is a claiming triple. This is easily overlooked because you don't do the marking. You might not see that two is restricted here. And this is beautiful stuff because if you find this, then it puts restrictions on these other cells. 
is what can these other cells now be? If they cannot be five or two, you'll notice this cell here, it could be a one, it can't be a two anymore, it can't be a three, it can't be a four, it can't be a five because the claiming pair, six, eight or nine, this is a one or a seven. What about this cell? You notice it could be a one, it can't be a two because the claiming triple, it cannot be a three, it cannot be a four, it cannot be a five because the claiming pair, six, eight, or nine. This is a one, seven, naked pair. You gotta find this naked pair. This is beautiful. And now you got this one, seven, naked pair. You can displace that seven here in block five. Solve this first seven, displaces that one, displaces that three, displaces that eight. Look at all the progress you're making. And now what you'll notice is you just have a four, nine remaining here in block five, but you have a pointy pair of nines here. So the nine has to go here. This has to be your four now. And what it leaves you with in column four, since you have a one, three, six, seven, eight, nine, it's just a two, four, five remaining. Since the four can only be on this spot in the column, you can solve that for a four right away. Leaves you with a nice two, five naked pair. And with this three, you can solve this cell now for a three. Displacing that three, solving this cell for a three. And so now you're making some progress in this puzzle. And you want to look now at the impact of row, column, and block. Go down here to block four. You notice you have three, four, five, seven, eight, nine in the row. It leaves you with another claiming triple. This time it's also a lock triple of a one, two, and a six. And the one can't go there because the one, two, and six have to be somewhere in row four. And they're restricted to block four. Those are the only three candidates that can be there. It's also a naked triple or block four. One, two, and six cannot be in any of these cells anymore. So what can be there? You already have a four, five, and a seven. You need a three, eight, and a nine. Well, this eight cuts across you saw that four and eight now. And remove the eight here. Remove the three, and you got a three, nine. Naked pair. Okay, this is beautiful stuff. So now you want to keep adding on and looking at impact, row, column, and block as you make these marks. You want to go to block nine now. Notice these two fives. Where can a five be in block nine? It can only be right there. And then with this one, and this one, you have two places for a one in block nine, and they're another pointing pair. To go with this one and this one, you can mark ones right there. And after finding that, you might notice this three and these threes. You can mark threes right here. So go back to your marking until you find another solve. Go back to block nine. There's still more going on here. You create a heavy house here. You have a three, six, seven, eight, nine. You need a one, two, four, and a five. Well, this one, four, five are in the column. This is a naked single two. And now you just have a one, four, five across the row. Nice naked triple. You want to mark that because you're finding restriction in this puzzle. And this is how you find these strategies that most other solvers may overlook. And after doing the one, four, five, Ask where a four can go here. Because of this four right here, you actually have a pointing triple of fours. So fours in all three of these spots, they act as a pointing triple, which means a four cannot be here. That might be easily overlooked. And now you can solve this cell for a four. And after solving that for a four, then what you want to look at is the eights. See this eight cutting across? This eight coming up? Here in block three, you have a pointing pair of eights. You go with this eight, now you can solve for an eight right there. And look at the impact of that. You can displace this eight, solve this cell now for an eight. Leaves you with a nice one, four, six, naked triple to finish block nine. And with this one, that can't be a one anymore. And since this is a one, four, six here, you'll notice is it restricts what can be in these cells. So you have a one, four, six in the column in this naked triple. You have a three and a five. So you just need a 
2, 7, 8, 9. Well, with the 7, 8, and pointy pair of 9s from the 3, 9, that has to be your 2. So you can solve that for a 2. And now you can disambiguate this naked triple. That's the 2, 5, there's the 6, and there's the 2. Beautiful stuff. And now with this 5, that's a 4, that's going to be a 1, that's going to be a 5 for row 8. See how that works? And now you can remove the 1 from right there. Leaves you with a 6, 7, 9. Make a triple here in block 6. Well, with this 9, that can't be a 9. With this 7, that can't be a 7. All right, and so now you want to move on and see what other solving you can do. You can remove the 6 from there. And what it leaves you with is now a 7, 8, 9. So that's going to be a 7, 8. This could be 7, 8, 9. Okay, after marking all that, go here to block 8. You have a full house. There's only one digit remaining. If you count up, you'll notice 1, 2, 2 is missing. So you can solve that for a 2 right away. Leaves you with a 9 and a 5 here. Well, with that 5, there's your 5. Displace that 9. So kind of go back to the scene of the crime, I call it. Look at impact, row, column, and block. This is how you get those, those next solves rather quickly. And then with these ones, if you displace the one, that's got to be your one displacing that four. You can disambiguate the four and the six right there. Full house in row seven. And I just count up one, two, three, four, five. Don't see a six. That's got to be a six. Leaves you a nice two, nine right there. And what's the impact of this six now? Well, that has to be a two. And with this one, that means this is going to be your six. That's going to be your one and so you can continue making progress in the puzzle so this two now there's your nine and there's going to be your two and so you can disambiguate the three and the nine right there and just keep working up the marks gobble them up hum down i call it that's got to be a three and now what do you have left up here it looks like a two and a seven you can't sell that just yet but you want to mark it and right here it looks like you need a nine and a six with this six there's your six there's going to be your nine and now you have it looks like a five and an eight here can't saw that just yet but i bet you will very soon because of this nine you can displace that nine solve this cell now for a nine and then you can solve this for a six that's going to be your seven that's going to be your nine right there and then what else can you solve? You'll notice that with this seven, a seven can't be here in row two, so this has to be your seven. That's gonna be your two. Disambiguate the five and the two there. Disambiguate the eight and the five there. This has gotta be your seven now. That's gotta be your eight. This is your one. That's gonna be your seven. You only have three cells left. Take the one, displace that one, solve this for a one. You just have a two and a six remaining. Pull over. This six, that's got to be your six. And your last cell is a two. Now see if you can spot the claiming triples in this next puzzle. Thank you so much for watching.